what's up guys? I'm Grandmaster Shaman and welcome back to another episode. I believe this is episode 6 of Sakura Night 3. And hopefully you guys are having a good day. If you guys did miss any of the previous episodes, I'd highly recommend going back and checking that out before you get to here. And, uh, well, we started this off with the mud incident. Uh, and if you guys missed the last episode, again, probably going to want to go and watch that one. Especially if you like your... Uh, rather sticky situations. Without further ado, we're going to get right into it. Make sure you guys hit the like button and we'll go for it from here. <clears throat> the mud incident be behind me and my clothes back in proper working order, I resume my travels through the forest with my party. Felicia continues to pout all the while about her, our clothes. She seems to think we should wear less, but I pay her little heed. I'm used to Felicia talking and talking and talking and talking, but I've gotten pretty used to ignoring her. Eventually, the sun begins to set below the horizon. The wind picks up and the air gets colder. Tall, choppy grass bl brussels against my uh, ankles and leaves that adorn the trees rustle and whisper among themselves. When I, trip, uh, when I tip my head up, I can see the night sky through the slivers of the leaves. The sky is pitch black, studded here and there with dif distant stars smaller than pinheads. I shiver. Maybe we should... Can't set up camp for now. I quite agree. It would be reckless to venture any further, given how dark it is. I would hate for anything to stu any of us to stumble over a stray tree root and potentially twist or sprain something. Felicia might be a strange person, but she's not stupid. Her fo uh, foibles uh, notwithstanding, I think she's quite intelligent. I'm glad she agreed to, to my decision so readily. Rune and Tart have no object objections, so the four of us... Uh, uh, search for a place to make camp for the night. We find a clearing that's respectively, uh, re relatively sparse of trees, and Tart uses her magic to set up a tent. Rune catches some fish at a nearby river, using nothing but her bare hands, while Felicia and I search for firewood. Tart lights the campfire with a few magical sparks, and Rune roasts our freshly caught supper over the flames. We eat together beneath the starry sky in uh, companionable silence. There's a bit of breeze, but it's not so much um, very unbearable now that I actually have some clothes to cover me. The whisper of the trees is actually kind of comforting. I never spent a full night in the forest before. I thought it might be frightening, but with the rustling undergrowth and the long, creeping shadows, but I'm with my companions, it doesn't seem so eerie. It feels like a place we're on some sort of trip. It feels like a, we're on some sort of trip, and it, I suppose, in a way, we are. There's a chance that we could get attacked by monsters, but I haven't seen or heard anything suspicious just yet. Maybe we'll emerge from this unscathed. I am sure hope so. Yeah, nothing feels better than freshly caught fish. Tart tears a fish with her teeth. Her uh, incisors glint with the moonlight like scissors. Mm, it might taste better with a little bit of salt, though. I wish I could have it with milk. I didn't know you liked milk so much. You always... Uh, knock back beer when we go to the tavern. Well, duh, you gotta drink beer when you go to a tavern. That's like the rule. I'm pretty partial to milk, though. And actually, it's actually my beverage of choice. <laughs> so, Tart just went up like 80 points in my book uh, for liking milk and having it be her preferred drink. Uh, I'm just saying. Uh, let's just throw out the fact that I drink like gallons of milk on a daily basis. Um... <laughs> It is definitely the preferred choice. We get, we we'll have uh, instead of like you know you have those dinners, and uh, we're just bam, gallons of milk next to a nice freshly prepared meal. Tart Tart's winning a, a lot of points there. She was definitely like bottom tier for a while, but you know that that boosts her up quite a few points. I look at Tart's, Tart's lilac ears, which twitch cutely as she digs her teeth into her fish. And I smile. I guess that's not so very surprising. Tart is a cat girl, after all. I should have known. When one thinks of cats, milk and fish are the first things that come to mind. I wonder if she likes to eat tiny birds, too, like pigeons. Maybe it'd be rude to ask. I'm not prejudiced, am I? I like fish. It good. Rune already finished one skewered fish and is starting on her second. A few bits of fish stick to her lips, which she doesn't bother to brush away. I guess she's too focused on eating. I have walked a lot today. I didn't realize just how tired I was until I sat down or how hungry either. I like meat too. Rabbit is good, but lots of, has but has lots of small bones. But I maybe I like deer most? 
Ooh, you're both such carnivores. Felicia giggles in a dignified manner. I'm Im I'm impressed that she can look so graceful and sincere despite nibbling on a charred fish skewered on a stick. Her cheeks are quite clean, unlike runes, and she's eating with a remarkable amount of restraint. Is this the result of her many years in the royal palace learning etiquette? Felicia's table manners are impeccable, even when she's sitting on a tree stump. Now, why can't she eat show buns the same way that, uh, the same amount of decorum? I do not dislike meat, but I am more partial to vegetables. We elves live plant-based diets for the most part. That's what I've heard as well. It's a pretty common theory among, like, what elves would actually do. Obviously, they're all make-believe, but... I think you mentioned that once before. What sort of, sort of food did you usually eat in Gree? Uh, root vegetables, mostly, and fruits, nuts and seeds. Anything we can grow with our own two hands. Huh? So you guys never have fish? What about deer? It's frowned upon. Elves are supposed to be one with nature. Killing harmless animals for the sake of food is considered taboo. Though there are exceptions. Felicia takes another prim, proper bite of her skewered fish. I must say, I did not know fish were so delicious. This is quite eye-opening. Imagine having not eaten fish before. What a sad life you must have led. I'm gonna be honest, I'm kind of with Tart on this one. Fish are fantastic, dude. I Fish are great. Salmon, uh, tilapia, you know. Uh, I know that tuna isn't... Well, tuna is a fish, but tuna, uh, shrimp... Seafood is great. Uh, I'm a big fan. It's just I don't get to eat it very often because in Utah, uh, we're kind of landlocked, which means that most of the seafood that we get has to be imported from out of state, which makes it very expensive. So seafood's pretty not common here. Um, but if I get to move to Japan, I'm, that's one thing I'm really excited about is that top tier seafood high quality stuff i'm pretty pumped for that um i've i haven't really tried much sushi though um because i don't like vinegar and if it didn't have vinegar i think it'd be fine um but the, at least the ones that i've tasted i've only tasted like two different kinds of sushi and they they just had too much vinegar maybe i i need like some uh sauce or something for it maybe that's what i'm missing it's entirely possible but the vinegar taste was just too strong. I'm sorry for your loss. <laughs> you don't need to sympathize with me. I, ha I had a very lavish upbringing by all accounts. I was born in a palace, you know, and I had, to co I had cooks make me any number of fine dishes. Can't be that fine. There are no meat. It wasn't necessary. Our cooks could, co could make hundreds of interesting dishes using squash alone. The colors and flavors are to die for. I'm particularly fond of... Squash risotto. Asparagus is another one of my favorite foods. It makes such a nice, satisfying snap when you bite into it. Asparagus? Rune pulls a face. I know, like, it green, tastes of wood. And it makes your breath stink. I can, couldn't live on diets like yours, Felicia. I'm a complete carnivore. I have pledged my life, know my very soul to meat. Meat is my god. That is true, though. I mean, wolves and and cats are, are carnivores. You, like, people who are like, we're going to make our cat have a vegan diet or something. That's, that's not how it works. They literally could die from that and have. Uh, people have killed their cats doing that stuff. Um, I will say, I can never be a vegetarian. Meat is just too good. Uh, fish, uh, beef. It's just too good. It's just too good. Now, I will say... I don't, I don't like how the meat, uh, how the animals are being treated that get turned into the meat that we, we use. Usually they're pretty terrible living situations for those animals, and I do think that we should probably fix that. But that being said, it, I can't just like stop eating meat because of that, because that's not going to change how the factories and, and farms treat their animals, just because one person or a few people don't eat as much meat you know how much chicken we sell on a daily basis you would have to in order for that to to make a major impact you would have to have like 80 percent of the population not eat meat at all until they, they they switched it now i i know there's like diet purposes and stuff i'm not saying that there's any of that i'm just saying i personally could not do it 
And the only reason that I would would be because the animals are mistreated, which me doing that isn't going to help them. You want to potentially vote for people who will get into positions in the Senate and the House that can do more food quality stuff and that have a focus in that area, which you, everyone should be voting this November in America for uh, whomever they choose to, to vote for. But I, I, I'd recommend take take what you want and make sure that those people that you're voting support the stuff that you are or are focused in areas that you are. Because you might be a Republican, but there might be a Democrat uh, going up against a Republican and the Democrat has more values uh, that sh you share than the Republican that uh, doesn't have as much. So sure, vote for your Republicans, vote for your Democrats, but always keep in mind that there might be a, a, a person from a different party that shares your values more closely or is going into a position that would actually be more beneficial for them to have certain uh, values or whatever. Uh, that's an unnecessary tangent, but hey. Uh, meat is good civilization. I don't know if that's how that works, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you understand me on this matter, Rune. I, I'm. It seems you are a fellow animal, uh, a girl of culture. I understand. Agree with Tart. Her personality rot him. Hey, but when food is involved, she has good taste. Bonsai. <laughs> Rune gives Tart a thumbs up. <laughs> I'm glad they've managed to form some sort of truce. I guess the two carnivore girls have something in common after all. Well, you're welcome. You're both welcome to have your own opinions. I'm not so boorish that I would try to change your mind. I understand that we all come from different cultures and that we all have our own customs. That is the beauty of this world. During my travels, I have some good. I have seen good a good many settlements, and I have spoken with many people of many races. Why, all four of us belong to different species, yet we all get along swimmingly. I think that is wonderful. Felicia smiles. Her face illuminated by burning fire. She takes a few dainty bites of her fish, taking care not to swallow any bones. I can't help but smile as I watch her. Felicia's right. We are all from different backgrounds, and we all have our own preferences. But despite that, we've been able to come together and work as a team. I might sound sappy, but I think that's a special thing. Now that things have quieted down a bit, maybe we should take this opportunity to ask Felicia more about her past. I must admit, I'm interested. Say, Felicia, what was your childhood like? I bet it must have been different than mine, given you lived in a palace. Isn't it hard being a princess? Your parents must have expected a lot from you. My, my. Felicia sits up a bit straighter, her eyes large and alert. You wish to know more about me, my dear Estelle? That makes me so very happy. I would only be too willing to comply if it's for your sake. I can tell you anything as long as you want... As uh, anything you wish to know about me, from the date of my auspicious birth to my fetishes to my three sizes. Wait, 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 wait. I don't want to know any about any of that stuff. What? Why not? I bet you have wondered it. I can see it in your eyes. They're shining inquisitively, like the stars that adorn the night sky. No, uh, if my eyes are shining, it's because of the campfire. But Felicia isn't listening to me. She's already started to recount one of her many swirling tales. As for my birth, let's see. I was born on a midsummer's eve, a good 50 years prior. I was the first child of my parents, and newly crowned king and queen, and my birth was celebrated all across Gree. People held parties in my honor, and even now, the day of my birth is celebrated national holiday among elves. That's very nice and all, but part of Felicia's story sounds a bit weird. Did you say 50? Ah, oh, yes, indeed, though it makes me blush to say it. Elves, you see, have longer lifespans than humans do. It is not uncommon for us to live 200 or even 300 years. I was born 50 years prior, but in elven terms, I'm still a young adult. To you humans, though, I suppose I am quite advanced in my years. I hope that is not a problem. You don't see me as an old woman, do you? No, I, I guess not. Felicia's a bit older than I thought. Is she really 50? But she d doesn't look like it. She appears to be youthful, and what with her what with her smooth skin and long silky hair, I doubt I'll look that good at fifty. Genetics sure aren't fair. Wonderful. I am glad th the difference in our ages shall not get in the way of our continued romance. R romance. Wait a second. Wait. No. Of course, we know about this romance. What the fuck? When she starts getting on a topic, she doesn't just stop. I've got caught up in her self-indulgent uh, or uh, oratories for hours before. Now, back to the day of my birth. As I said, it was midsummer. The streets were decorated with uh, bunting to hail my birth. 
uh, and many people were all very excited. My parents chose to name me Felicia, after the word Felicity. They hoped such a name would bestow upon me blessings of great fortune. As I grew up in the palace, I remember... Ah, uh, if this doesn't stop, she'll keep going on and on. Now I remember why I never asked her questions about her past. It's because she never shuts up. I'm such a fool. If she has 50 years worth of stories, though. It takes Felicia 2 hours, 24 minutes, and 33 seconds precisely to finish the length, uh, uh, the lengthy story of her childhood. I know, because I kept count. Rune falls half asleep halfway through the spiel, her head resting among Tart's shoulder. Tart herself looks similarly tired, her eyes glazed over with boredom, her eyelashes drooping. She feel, she's, I'm feeling distinctly exhausted myself. My feet are aching from all our walking, and now my ears are aching all at the Felicia's chronic inability to shut up. I've, I've never met a person who could talk about themselves for such a long time. It's kind of impressive, and a little scary. During those two hours, 24 minutes, and 33 seconds, she didn't even pause for a breath, nor to take a sip of water. Does her throat ever get sore? Maybe that's another perk of being an elf, alongside a long lifespan and dazzling good looks. If there are any monsters in our immediate vicinity, they kept themselves to themselves. Why not just say kept to themselves? Perhaps, like Room, they were being put to sleep by Fel Felicia's narrative. When she continuously, uh, eventually concluded her story, she looks at the camp with a confused expression on her face. Oh my, what's this? You seem to have trouble keeping your head up, Tart, and Rune has, qu has quite fallen asleep. Are you that tired? I wasn't until you started talking. I suppose my voice is soothing, yes. I've heard it be called, uh, sephoric before. I must inadvertently have lulled you to sleep with my angelic cadences. I do apologize. Ah, sure. Uh, let's go with that. Tart yawns. She presses her hand to her mouth, and tears beat in her eyes. This movement jostles Rune. She lifts her head up from Tart's shoulder and blinks, wiping uh, sleep from her eyes with uh, pa padded paws. Mm, what is it? Is Fel still talking? I think she might have stopped for now. Oh, thank goodness. If she still talk, I have uh, to silence. Was thinking to punch her before I fell asleep. I don't know if I can condone that. We might have to fight Saga, remember? We shouldn't be bickering amongst one another. I can't really fault Rune for those sentiments, though. My own patience was beginning to run dangerously thin. Oh, you. You're so funny, Rune. You act as though I know you, but I know you don't mean that. How you figure. It isn't possible for anybody to dislike me. Very interesting. <laughs> I'm surprised Felicia could say something like that with a straight face. I'm very popular among my c the citizens of Gree. They all say I'm a perfect model of royal grace and decorum, and my citizens, my siblings, all loved listening to my tales. I fail to see why you should be any different. Maybe elves are more partial to long, meandering stories because they live long, meandering lives? Your kind might be able to live for hundreds of years, but the rest of us can't. Our time is precious. Hmm, I suppose you do have a point. I did not consider that. You don't seem to consider much other than yourself. Now that is not true. I care for each and every one of you. That being the case, uh, Felicia rises to her feet. She stretches her arm above her head. Her joints click, and then she glances at the campfire. I think before I take my leave for the night, I should engage in a bit of training. We did not run into any monsters today, and I haven't had the chance to practice my swordsmanship. I do not want my still skills with the blade to go rusty. That could spell disaster should Saga prove to be a worthy adversary. Hmm? But it's still so late. Are you sure you want to, don't want to go to bed? Sleep is for the weak. As someone with insomnia... Yep, strong! <sighs> okay. As the future queen of Gree, it is my duty to protect my people and my friends, too. I cannot afford to skip a single day of training, no matter how advanced the hour. Would any of you care to join me? Felicia looks at Rumen and Tart, but they both shake their heads. Not on your life. As a bona fide uh, A-grade cutie, I need my beauty sleep. I won't let Saga, or whatever her name is, come between me and my eternal pursuit for smooth, youthful skin. Is that what it is? Is that why I don't have smooth, youthful skin? Is because I fucking don't sleep ever? ever? God. That makes sense. I decline also. Sleep important before a big hunt. Our final fight tomorrow. We must rest. Now that Rune mentioned it, I guess she's right. We've made pretty good progress today. If Alice's map is to be believed, we should 
uh, arrive at Saga's lair tomorrow. We'll have to face her down and her army of fierce monsters. The thought is more than wor a little worrying. I'm not sure if I'm up to the task. Will I really be able to best her? Since I'm the only one, uh, I'm the one who got us into this mess. Maybe it's my, I have an obligation to train with Felicia. She is looking at me pretty expectantly. Estelle, would you care to get your blood pumping with me? I could show you a few, a few moves or two. It, uh, and it might help in less, help lessen your anxiety. You can tell that I'm anxious. Please, you're always anxious. Tart, uh, tart snorts, and my face turns pink. Ah, yes. I tend to worry a lot. Physical exertion might be able to help you. Your sleep will be much deeper because of it, and I promise I won't harm you. What do you think? Well, I ponder. Training with Felicia might be a good idea, but it is very late. I'm afraid if I push myself too hard, I'll become exhausted tomorrow morn. What should I do? Wait, this is actually a, a, a big choice? I mean, what, what was the... I'll be exhausted tomorrow morning. That is true. If I train with Felicia, I will be potentially exhausted in the morning. But if I stay with Rune and Tart, then I can get well rested and I might be able to trigger a flag or two. I mean, what type of flags? <sighs> All right, I think this is a very important decision and we're at 20 minutes. So I think that's about it for this episode. So make sure you guys hit that like button down below for me because you already know your support's greatly appreciated as well as subscribing to the channel if you have not done so already. Let me know in the comment section what you thought. think about the series. Have any of your favorite characters changed? Uh, what's your favorite part of uh, Sakura Night 3? Uh, and make sure you do check the link in the description to purchase the game yourself uh, if you want to play ahead or if you uh, like the artwork, for example. Uh, you can get the... Uh, you can play through the game yourself, and then uh, you can image, uh, take the images of the artwork and uh, put them as your desktop background or something. Uh, very, very fun game. Um, I would really recommend it, and we'll see you all for another exciting episode 7 next time.